Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have a very cool Jurassic Park model here to take a look at. You can quite clearly see it's Jurassic Park with this really nice Jurassic Park logo right here in front of us. If we pan up here a little bit, you can see Art Scale 1 tenth, and then down here we do have Dilophosaurus. This is the 1 tenth Art Scale Iron Studios Dilophosaurus I have previously reviewed the Velociraptor, one of which, which I was never able to get the other two, which is really unfortunate as I really wanted to get a hold of those, but I kind of delayed on ordering them on Big Bad Toy Store, and before you knew it, they were gone, and now I don't have a chance to get them. But you can see the Iron Studios logo down here, and then as we come up, this is actually, I think, my favorite part of the box. Look at that really nice image of the Dilophosaurus right here on the side of the box. That looks super, super cool. Definitely my favorite part of this box for sure. But then when we turn it around here, we actually have a look at the Dilophosaurus model that is contained inside and then the base. And again, Iron Studios down here. And then if we turn it one last time, just Dilophosaurus. And then down here, the Iron Studios logo, all that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and get this out of the packaging right now. So here is the base to our Dilophosaurus. Just like the Velociraptor base, we have that really nice look to it with the Jurassic Park logo. And then here is the Dilophosaurus itself, which at first glance, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not all that impressed with it, honestly, which is pretty shocking. I expected to absolutely love this model as I am a gigantic fan of the Dilophosaurus from the Jurassic Park films, trying to figure out where the hole is for the peg to slide into. There it is, I couldn't see it at first for some reason. So once we slide this into the base, now we'll take a look at it standing here. And uh, again, definitely not as impressed with this one as I was with the Velociraptor, especially just looking at the paint scheme. I feel like the paint scheme, or the paint application, I should say, not the paint scheme, but the paint application is not all that nice looking. But I guess the only way to truly tell how nice this is or how ugly it is is to get a closer look. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So starting up here at the head sculpt of the Dilophosaurus, you can see as far as the actual sculpting goes, that is really, really beautiful looking. An absolutely gorgeous looking head sculpt for a Dilophosaurus, a Jurassic Park style Dilophosaurus. But one thing, if we look past the actual sculpt and we just look at the paint, one thing I can definitely say is there's just really not much to it as far as the head sculpt goes here. There's not much paint application, and I would expect quite a bit more on something like this that's kind of released by one of them higher-end collectible companies like Iron Studios. You would just expect a better paint job, and it's pretty much the bare minimum as to what we have here on the head sculpt of the Dilophosaurus. You pretty much just have one tone of this greenish coloration that we see that's kind of the primary body color, and then the black that kind of runs up around the head. And that's about it. You can see a little bit of the white that sort of circles around it, but that doesn't even appear down here. And then of course we do have the eye. The eye is glossed actually quite nicely and does sport a nice black pupil. If we take a look here at the other side, again, same deal. There's just really not much paint application to the face at all. There's just not much going on, which is quite a bit of a downside. I can also say that I don't really like how the skin flap of the mouth here is connecting to the top of the mouth. It looks like it almost runs out past the mouth. Now there it looks okay if we look at it from the front, although the jaw looks a little bit wide to me on the lower jaw. But if we look over here, something about that just it looks like it's a very clear line where it disconnects. And I'm not a huge fan of that either. So uh, again, quite a few little downsides to the figure. And also another one straight away is the inside of the mouth does look like it's painted quite nicely. The teeth actually look incredibly nice. Beautiful teeth for sure. Very nicely painted. And there's a beautiful gloss coat inside the mouth as well. But as far as the Dilophosaurus from Jurassic Park goes, I don't think that's the coloration of the tongue. I'm pretty sure it had like a purplish tongue. And here we see just a regular coloration for the tongue pretty much the same coloration that we see here on the side of the mouth. So another area that isn't all that great as far as this Dilophosaurus goes. But that gloss coat and everything inside the mouth and the detailing and everything inside the mouth does look really quite nice overall. So that is a plus, at least as far as that goes. Now we'll move on to the next area that I'm not a super huge fan of, and that would be the frill of the Dilophosaurus. Although I will say that sculpt-wise, once again, that is absolutely gorgeous. It is beautifully sculpted and does look pretty much exactly as I can recall the frill looking in Jurassic Park. And even that kind of scene right there, that image of the Dilophosaurus looking at us and angrily potentially spraying some venom on us, looks really, really nice, but I feel like the tones of color and just in general, the frill doesn't look as nice as 
it should. It doesn't look as nice as it did in Jurassic Park for sure, but I feel like the frill as far as like the yellows and everything had a bit more of a brighter appearance in the film. Even the red had a bit of a brighter appearance in the film. And here on this Iron Studios version, the paint is a lot darker than I feel like it should be. And just kind of uh, a little lazier than I feel like it should be. I will put it that way. It just it doesn't feel like they really put much effort into the actual paint job as far as the different tones of color because again you only have this darker coloration that borders the outside and then you have a dark red and a dark yellow and that's it. There's a little more color variation to it in the film and I feel like Iron Studios could have potentially done a better job on that area as well. But again I'm not saying that it looks bad because it really does look quite nice and I might just be nitpicking because I expect a lot more from kind of these bigger sort of statue companies like Iron Studios and Prime One and things like that. Chronicle Collectibles now, I guess, can't really be added onto that list anymore as I'm pretty sure they are bankrupt currently, but you can definitely see that the paint application on there isn't really all that great. Turning it around, I will say I really like the fact that they did include this black and the kind of white that circles around it and borders around it on the back of the frill. The back of the frill looks really nice, I will say that. Again, there's not much paint variation or anything back here, but it does look nice with this appearance because most times people sort of don't paint the back of the frills at all, and I always wondered kind of what the back of the frill of the Dilophosaurus looked like, and now... Seeing the Iron Studios version, I guess we've got a pretty good idea of what it could potentially look like. That does look really quite cool. Leading down here into the neck, the actual sculpt and detail is phenomenal. You see lots of really nice skin wrinkling and skin movement there in the neck region of the Dilophosaurus. Again, another area I'm not a huge fan of is there's sort of like a reddish coloration here, and there's definitely a red on the Dilophosaurus in the film, but the red here is really, really kind of uh, dull, but I feel like it should be, again, a little bit brighter and a little bit more significant than what we see here. It was just like the really tiniest little amount of it right there. But the sculpt and detail does look really quite nice. You start up with this design that we see all over the Dilophosaurus right here, and that area does look really quite nice as far as the way that's applied. Looks really, really cool if we look at it from the top up here, and uh, you can see some beautiful skin wrinkling and everything going on right there. Nicely sculpted out shoulder blade. This is kind of in that stance where the Dilophosaurus was just sort of standing there, kind of spitting some of its venom onto Nedry, so it has a very neutral-like position to the overall body because it was pretty much standing just like this in the film, so that's kind of the iconic pose for this dinosaur, kind of why we almost always get this exact same pose in every model released as far as this goes. But again, the detailing of the actual figure does look really quite nice. You have a little bit more of that kind of black design down here in the arms. The hands are really nicely painted as far as the greenish coloration, nicely sculpted, beautifully painted nails. Again, I feel like maybe a wash or something on the hand would have brought the detail out on them a little bit nicer. It just looks really flat, I would say, with the way the paint application is. Moving back up here into the body, you can pick out the rib cage, some beautiful skin texture, lots of really nice skin detail down here, really nice skin wrinkling and everything. There's a very strong dry brushing that they've given this with a grayish coloration or a white, I don't know which, but I am absolutely not a fan of that. I don't think that that was a very good choice on their part, and it's just so overwhelming that I feel like it just really takes it away from the figure overall. It doesn't really make it look like it has skin color, like variations of skin color. It just looks like somebody dry brushed some gray over it, and uh, I'm not a huge fan of that either. Again, I feel like they could have chosen a lot better of uh, different tones of colors to give it as far as like a dry brushing, especially they could have picked something that just looked a little bit better, a little bit more natural on the figure, and this just kind of doesn't really do it for me. Really nice skin wrinkling right here though, very nicely sculpted out hip bone right there. The calf and the thigh are really nicely defined as far as the musculature goes. You have the nice kneecap right here in the front, beautiful scoot-like appearance down into the feet. The foot sculpt on both sides of the feet are really, really nicely sculpted. That is beautiful detailing there on the feet. Very nicely painted nails. Once again, I feel like a wash or something would have brought the detail out on the feet a little better. Instead, we just have one solid color of green. There was just pretty much no attempt as far as giving this different variations of skin tone. We do have the dew claws back here. They are sculpted out and painted quite nicely, so that is a plus. Again, coming up here, you can really see that very strong, kind of gross-looking dry brushing that they've given the figure with that gray really just almost takes the detail away, I feel like, and uh, doesn't look very good at all. Instead of doing a dry brushing, they should have given this like a wash of some kind. It would have really looked a lot better, but the detailing here in this area 
does look really quite nice and the sculpt looks beautiful as we lead out here onto the tail. The black coloration here on the top that's kind of bordered by that white does run the entire length of the tail and that area does look super super nice I will say that. That is beautifully done on the part of Iron Studios. If we look at this side we don't really need to look at too much because honestly it's exactly the same as far as what we see on the opposing side because it's standing in a completely neutral position. But you can see once again that sculpt wise it is fantastic. Paint wise it's 50-50 for me because I do like the tones of green that they've used and I do like that it kind of lightens up in certain areas and everything. It does look really quite nice in that aspect but I hate the dry brushing they've given it but I do like the black again so it's Really sort of hit or miss as far as the paint application goes, but still a really cool looking Dilophosaurus, and I'm definitely not unhappy that I purchased it, but I am unhappy at the effort that Iron Studios has put forth with the paint job. And then we have the base, and the base is just like the Velociraptor base that we had seen previously. It does have actually a nice wash, unlike the Dilophosaurus, but you can see lots of cracks and crevices and everything within it, lots of like broken areas, and then that fantastic looking Jurassic Park logo right there and the underside does sport the Jurassic Park symbol and then Dilophosaurus Iron Studios art scale 1 10th. So really nice looking base for a pretty decent looking Dilophosaurus. And just like with the Velociraptor, although you had already seen me connected to the base, you connect the Dilophosaurus to the base with a peg here on the foot and then you just have to find that one little hole and it actually does slide in quite nicely and stands really nicely as well. There's no wobbly appearance to it or anything. It seems pretty stable overall. As far as the size goes, from the head to the tail, and it's up a little higher than you could probably see, but from the head to the tail you were looking at about 12 and a half inches or around the 31 and a half centimeter range, somewhere in that region. And if we turn this up a little bit higher, face it up a little higher, we'll get a Good height here, you can see it's a little over six inches, closing in on six and a quarter inches, or about 15 and a half, maybe closing in on 16 centimeters. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line. Looking at our Dilophosaurus here next to it, kind of Dilophosaurus looks like he's facing away as if he's ashamed. But you could get a pretty good idea, I think, of the size of this. If you happen to have the old Lindbergh Dilophosaurus, it's actually really similar in size to that. So it's not super large, but it's not super small. It does sport some decent size, but again, it's nothing that's very, very large. Nothing impressively large. So this one-tenth scale Iron Studios Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus is pretty nice. But there are definitely quite a bit of issues as far as the paint application. The sculpt, I feel like, is phenomenal. The sculpt overall looks beautiful in every way as far as the fine detailing goes and just generally appearing like a Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus. I think they 100% nailed it in every way, except for the lower jaw kind of looks a little weird to me in certain areas and the way it's applied to the upper jaw just... It looks wider than it should be and just kind of looks a little strange, but at the same time, it's not that bad. It still looks pretty decent, I guess. But again, as far as the overall sculpt goes, I really feel like it is quite nicely done and definitely has a pretty darn beautiful and very screen accurate appearance to it. However, once we get to the paint application, that's where the problems start because I feel like even the tone of green, the tones that they've used as far as the green on the Dilophosaurus really doesn't look all that accurate to what we see on the film. It's just not as nice looking, I would say, as what we saw in the film. But the paint application in general just doesn't really have much applied to it as far as different tones of color for the Dilophosaurus. And I really feel like because of that, the model suffers greatly. Even in the face, there's just really nothing going on paint-wise. It's almost like they just didn't even try. I don't know if they have bigger and better things to do, but they definitely could have put more effort into the actual paint application of this Dilophosaurus. I feel like companies like Nanmu or W Dragon, if they made a Dilophosaurus, especially if it was in this size range, it would be light years better than what we see here from Iron Studios. And Iron Studios is supposed to be one of these wonderful, great big statue companies that should be producing some of the best Jurassic Park collectibles that we've ever seen. But 
Again, it's just really not that great as far as the paint application. The tongue being the wrong color instantly is a huge downside because the tongue on the Dilophosaurus in the film was like a purplish coloration, whereas here they just kind of gave it the same coloration that you see on the skin flaps there on the side of the mouth, so that straight away is definitely a downside. The lack of color on the head, just kind of giving it that very generic looking paint, is also quite a downside to the figure. The frill not being very bright and not really having much of a design to it as far as looking similar to what we had seen on the Dilophosaurus in the film is also a downside. It's very dull looking here and just generally doesn't look like there was much effort put forth into painting the frill either. The greens used again are not really that great as far as matching up to the Dilophosaurus in the film and they have applied an incredibly obnoxious dry brushing to the figure with a gray that just really takes away from the figure majorly if you ask me. Sometimes a gray dry brushing can look really nice. If you saw my recent review of the one Giganotosaurus figure that I had found on eBay, it had a really nice dry brushing with a gray. This has an attempt at that, but it's failed miserably. I don't know if it's a gray or a white. It's hard to tell. It looks like a kind of a mixture of both but it's just not very good and they've even kind of dry brushed that over top of the black areas which also kind of drowns those areas out a little bit the black kind of design with the white bordering around it is definitely the best part of the paint application of the figure and I do like that they applied some paint to the back of the frill as well but uh, moving past that there's not really much to it no washes or anything seem to have been given to the figure. The red coloration that should be in the throat of the Dilophosaurus also is just barely present and not quite as vibrant as it should be. So as a whole, the paint job is pretty terrible on this, but the sculpt is really nice. So if you would like to pick this up, I will include a link in the description to Sideshow where I picked mine up. I do believe it is also available on Big Bad Toy Store currently, but again, it's up to you guys. It's kind of a 50-50. Really nice sculpt, but a pretty terrible paint job. Either way, I will include a link in the description, so make sure you check that out. And make sure you also like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.